So we're going to start with Dr. Yasmin Davis, who is a USC alum. She is a author. She is a organizational psychologist, and she is the founder and CEO of the Multicultural Women's Executive Leadership Foundation. Dr. Yasmin. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Reese. This is my girl, Love Reese. <laughs> um, thank you for having me here. I'm a diehard Trojan, have graduated with an entrepreneurial program undergrad 20, 30 years ago, who knows, but basically many years ago, have had ventures since then, multiple businesses. I have the Dr. Yuffie Davis Leadership Institute, the Multicultural Women Executive Leadership Foundation, the Women's Institute of Negotiation, all organizations built to help develop women leaders especially women of color um, throughout the world. And, and publishing my fifth book will be coming out this May called Graciously Assertive, How Becoming a Better Human Being Makes You a Better Leader. And um, all books developed to empower and develop women leaders. So I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Dr. Yasmin, I'd like to hear from you next because you have a particular suite of products and you have a profound story behind why you chose to go into the domain that you chose. So can you talk a little bit about how the person you played a key role in you deciding to launch your businesses? Yes, well, I decided at the age of five that I was going to change the world and make it better for women. That's right. And, and it was a, a clear commendable gave And the reason, why, the reason why I chose to go that route is because I grew up in a very dysfunctional family. My father was very abusive towards my mother's sisters and I. And I would ask my mom, mommy, por qué? In Spanish, she didn't speak English. They're great education. She was here from Mexico. My dad's from Ecuador. Like, why, why don't we leave? I knew something was wrong. I knew that, you know, my mom not being able to ask questions, us being silenced by, by a look, or we would get hit, was not okay. And so she's like, me, that I don't know the language. I don't have any skills. You know, if I leave, we're, help, we're, we're homeless. You know, this is the way things are. And I said, oh no, mommy, when I grow up, I'm going to change the world and make it better for women. Don't ask me where I got my little guts. Don't ask me why. I, I mean, but I realized later, after 30 years of therapy, that, um, that it was my way of survival. It was my way of finding hope for the future, was finding a way to see I cannot control my today, but I could control my tomorrow and help other women be able to not be in the same situations. It's no surprise that I got my PhD, become the most educated Latina that there could be, because that made me self-sufficient, made me economically, uh, financially free enough to be educated to, to make the money that I, that I wanted to make and be financially stable, build whatever I wanted to build. And we'll go into different entrepreneur ventures. When it comes to diversity and it comes to Belonging, because to me, diversity is irrelevant if there's no belonging. That's just my thing. You can have a bunch of different colors, but if they don't feel they belong, it doesn't matter if it's all dominant one culture and we all have to conform. So to me, it's really about a sense of belonging. And how we do that in our institute and in our programs is there's three elements. You have to be extremely intentional. You can't just do it as a byproduct of something. Extremely intentional on how you're creating a sense of belonging. Number two, you have to be ego-free. And I'll explain why. And number three, you have to systematize it, operationalize, whatever it is. And a quick example that actually, I think it was our beautiful sister Reese here that, that um, in 2018, we had the Latina Global Executive Leadership Program. In 2017, 2018, we went into a multicultural a transition. So it became from an all Latina program to now women of all cultures. Well, some women were showing up and they would say things in Spanish, just kind of like, you know, um, La, what do you call it? Uh, la chancla, like to bring out la chancla. And that la chancla means in land culture, they you know bring out the, the shoe. That's how our parents and they would throw you the shoe. It's just kind of like a funny thing. And so, was it you, Reese, that came to me? Reese came to me. She was in our cohort, our, our cohort in 2018, our um, first cohort, and she said, Dr. Davids, you know, um, women, some women are speaking Spanish, and I don't understand them and it doesn't make me feel like, and, and, and her own words doesn't make me feel like I belong. And I was like, well, hell no. <laughs> I was like, that's not gonna happen here. So at that moment, I made a decision. I made an executive decision that if, I also didn't want people to feel they can say things in their native language. So I needed to find a way to merge and be intentional. So I said, okay, ladies, there's a new policy 
that policy is if you choose to say something in a different language, you can say that, but you have to repeat it in English and explain what you just said because it's also an opportunity for education. So you can educate your fellow sisters. It doesn't matter from you know black, brown, Asian. It doesn't matter, and um, in that way everybody learns, and you still feel that you can be say Spanish things, and everybody accepted it. And then there would be, as we went further on throughout the years, sometimes women would forget. So our our staff would then interpret it and say it, and then we decided to operationalize this. We needed to so now it's policy. When fellows come in to call the women fellows, we tell them this is a policy now. This is how we do things. Everybody feels they belong, and everybody loves it because everybody starts educating each other, and there's always a sense of belonging. So that's, but I had to be ego free for a student to come to me and put me on check and basically say, hey, you know, but she felt comfortable enough to do that because that's the environment I created. So ego free, intentionality, and systematizing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Back to Yasmin. Um, can you answer the same question, please? What advice would you give these aspiring buddy entrepreneurs, keeping in mind some of the things you learned early on and some of the partnerships that you made that helped you be successful? What kind of advice would I give them? Yes. I, I would say that um, I think one of the questions in the list of questions was, in hindsight, you know, looking back, what would you do differently or what would you focus on? And my answer to that question continuously is I would do absolutely nothing differently. Because I am who I am today because of everything that I have been through up to now. Every single step of the way, what I've learned, I wouldn't have learned if I hadn't made that mistake, if I hadn't fallen, if I hadn't you know, been betrayed, if I hadn't you know, and worked with investors that, you know, some figuring out what investors, you know, lining up on values, how important that is. If I didn't, if I worked, if I had to work with investors that I didn't line up on values, I would have realized that it didn't, doesn't work. It doesn't work when your values are not, when our value driven purpose, I'm like, like driven, purpose driven, and they're not, um, not even a little bit, it doesn't work, right? And that's trying a different way. So all the money you've got, I've lost, all times I've fallen, those are a part of the journey. And I actually am grateful for them and I see them as gifts. So it truly is about your perspective in life. I see the trauma that I went through as a gift because it gave me purpose. I would not be so purpose driven if I hadn't been through the trauma that I went through. I don't believe I wouldn't because I wouldn't, there's nothing that would be driving me as much. So to me, I say take every experience that you go through and take it as a building block. You know, I had to do this interview video this past week about internal confidence versus external confidence. And I say external confidence is built on the accolades, the money, the power, having the nice body, the nice clothes, you know, but there's always gonna be somebody prettier than you, richer than you, you know, smarter than you, has more degrees than you, and you're never gonna feel you measure up and you're always gonna be chasing that confidence that the external world gives you. Don't get me wrong, I like money, I like good life, but it doesn't define me. I know I've survived with and without it, but builds the confidence is taking what I have survived and knowing that I'm only how I survive and use it to build myself and build others and help people find their story that the most thing they're most ashamed of and take it, embrace it, heal from it, and build upon it and be proud of it with it overcome. No one can take that away from you. You will always have that strength and just let yourself shine and that brings you peace. So don't let this outside world take your confidence from you. Build your internal confidence. And, and love yourself in the process of building whatever it is you want to the outside world. Awesome. Thank you. So I took a look for that. Thank you much for finding gifts in every situation, good or bad, and to have that internal confidence to keep going and find people who are associated with your values, your value-driven purpose, driven purpose. Thank you for that. So that's really powerful. And I know with Dr. Yasmin, teachings and what we learned a lot of leadership development is having your true heart. So can you kind of just piggyback on what Professor just said and kind of explain why that is so important as an entrepreneur? Yes, yeah, so about entrepreneur, I mean, you're, you're driven many times for that external, whatever it is that you want to build and it's great, but how, how clear are you about your values and what's important to you, how it aligns, because you don't want to find yourself at 70 years old saying, what have I done with my life? I have all this money, I built well. You know, I, I, many people who've retired now are like, did I even have a purpose? Like, did I really give anything now? 
they, they're, they reflect, they were just chasing whatever they thought they needed to chase to be successful, what America tells them, or the world tells them, that is what success looks like. But internally, are they aligned to finding fulfillment? There's a difference between happiness and fulfillment. Happiness you can have, you have a beautiful family, a great job, and you're like, I'm happy, but I'm not fulfilled. There's something missing. Fulfillment comes from contribution. It truly does. There's an alignment of contribution and happiness. There's, so getting really clear on what's most important to you, doing a value assessment of yourself. And we use a book called uh, True North by Bill George. It's a workbook and a hardcover. And um, it really allows you to go deep dive into your childhood, into your crucibles, what you went through in life, and how you built your values. And do you still hold them now? And do you want them? Do you want those values? And what's clear to you, once you get clear on your values, everything changes. Because you're so clear on what type of job you want, or if you want to build your own business, what kind of business you want to build. And now everything becomes a more of a process and trying to find what aligns with your values. You're so clear. Most of the time I find individuals who are hugely financially successful but are not happy or are not fulfilled. And it's because they're not clear on their values and they haven't been leading in their lives. I, I, mean, I think one thing that happens there when you're clear on your values in, in your true door, as you say, um, all of a sudden you shift from how do I fit myself into what others want? And instead, it becomes a filter the other way around. Uh, who is aligned with what I want. You know, and that's exactly what's powerful. Well, to me, it's like, how do I create, make helping women become self-sufficient, get the tools. So I have, I created a women's leadership, or, um, executive leadership program in partnership with USC Marshall School of Business. And when the women couldn't afford, because it's an expensive program, we created a foundation to help women fund the program. They can't afford to pay for it themselves. We give them scholarships to go through the program. So I created, I created the world that I wanted instead of trying to fit into the world that wanted to be a slum. And I would love if you guys could speak to maybe whether or not you feel this necessary to have that background and to have that experience um, as I consider taking on a nine to five or you know, um, putting myself into those spaces so I can see how a larger organizational or corporation looks like as that is one of my, you know, my mission and my goal is to have large impact. So I would love to have a big organization and I've never seen one, you know. Um, so if you can speak to that, do I need that experience or can I just stay in my little entrepreneur corner and, you know, thug it up with my friends? <laughs> Thank you so much. That's that. I, for I've been developing empowerment for 25 years. The first 15 years, I was contracted as doing leadership development for different companies, like EDI, the largest leadership development company in the world. I was a trainer for them. And so I, I taught their content, and I went into different companies and helped develop women. And I was still doing my coaching and stuff on the side as I was developing myself, learning the business, understanding it, but I wasn't making enough money to fully support myself, you know, just doing my own thing. After doing, once I started building my brand, I started building my name, and started thinking about having an institute where I partnered with Marshall and leveraged their credibility as, as an institution, academic institution, to be a partner with me, to back me as I developed the Leadership Institute. Then 10 years ago, I launched on my own, my Leadership Institute, my Leadership Company, Entrepreneur Program for Multicultural Women, Leadership Program, Women Negotiation Program, and partnering with different schools. But it took me 15 years of me that was you know nowadays people just get investors get money and they do it for me it was more about me learning the business and understanding what i even wanted to do with how i wanted to do it i wanted to do it differently and so i did that i did that being a contractor doing other people's stuff and then building on my own and then being sustainable enough to make enough money and then start building on my own so i think there's different ways of doing it i didn't want to i guess for me it was important to figure it out. I believe in building something. If something happens, I can build it again. So I need to understand it fully. So for me, I was invested in really learning it. Other people are like, I don't need to learn. I can pay people to do that, which is, which is fine too. It depends on who, who you want to be and how you want to be.